Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was just a stunning day. Here's a team that has lost Super Bowls and AFC title games under Bill Cowher, but it seemed like it hurt even more deeply today to lose to the lowly Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals' third win of the year was a 25-24 decision over the Steelers at Three Rivers. Amy Rourke and Sean Jones were there to cover the action. From the moment the Cincinnati Bengals ran onto the field at Three Rivers Stadium, you would have thought their future was decided. Pittsburgh was hungry for revenge, Corey Dillon was out, and the last time the Bengals won, nine weeks ago against the home team. But once the game started, a sparkle of confidence began to shine through on the Bengals' offense. They were moving the ball downfield. It was a sight that's been sparse with this team for a while now. In the Bengals' first possession, it was a vision of the old Jeff Blake-Darnay-Scott connection. Blake found Scott three times on the drive, one for 15, the second for 12, and another for 18 yards. But fourth and second on the Bengals' 36, the pass to Scott was knocked down by LeVon Kirkland, and Cincinnati had to bring in their defense. Pittsburgh's Cordell Stewart was no match for the Bengals today. Three plays, and they were ready to punt. The next drive would get Cincinnati on the board first. A pass to Brandon Bennett, and he was gone for 25 yards. Brandon played well. You know, he's a good back. We like him. Uh, you know, hopefully that, you know, we'll have Corey back, you know, Kajana back next year, and Brandon will have a stable of real fine running backs we can count on. And we knew if we had a balanced attack, then we had a, a definite chance to win. Then the Steelers put the pressure on, holding the Bengals to only a field goal. Kicking team came in, and Doug Pelfrey placed one through the uprights for 33 yards. It was 3-0 Cincinnati. To cap off the first quarter, the Bengals' defense not only kept the Steelers from scoring, they finished it with a bang. First and 10, Stewart drops back and back, and Brian Simmons pulls him down for the sack. The defense felt real good. I think, uh, you know, for the things that we was up against, you know, the turnovers and, and uh, you know, the interception for a touchdown, uh, I think we played the way that, that, that we need to play. In the second, the defense held down the Steelers again. Third and seven, and Renard Wilson sacks Stewart. He fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by Sam Shade. He runs it back for 55 yards, his first NFL touchdown ever. It's now 10-0 Cincinnati. Uh, it was a blitz, and uh, the, back, he, the back was responsible for blocking me, and uh, I beat him, and uh, Renard knocked the ball out of Cordell's hand, and somehow... I mean, that ball seemed like it was bouncing forever, and I just wind up grabbing a hold to it and taking it all away. Then with more help from Pelfrey, the Bengals were up 13 to nothing in no time. But would it last? Well, the Bengals' defense dominated again, holding the Steelers' offense to a scoreless first half. But their defense, that was another story. Third and eight on their own four-yard line, Blake's pass was intended for Carl Pickens, but it was intercepted by Carnell Lake. He scrambled around, found a hole, and ran it in for the touchdown. Bengals were up by only six points now. The end of the half was creeping up. Pelfrey was caught on again, this time to stop the clock, though. He spikes the ball, then sets up for another field goal. His 43-yard kick is good, and the Bengals were up 16-7 to at halftime. You just go through it like a fog and just keep trying and, and working hard, and you try not to try too hard, because that can be a problem. In the beginning of the third quarter, Pittsburgh regrouped while Cincinnati gave up their nine-point lead. First, David Dunn on the kickoff return. He fumbles, but it's recovered by teammate Chris Oldham. He runs it back for a 54-yard touchdown. The Steelers were within two. The Steelers changed their offensive game plan for the second half, taking out Stewart and replacing him with Mike Tomzak. That's when things started to happen. Tomzak passed to Charles Johnson, this catch was worth 42 yards, giving Pittsburgh another chance to score. Now it was time for the bus. Jerome Bettis goes right up the middle for the four-yard score. Pittsburgh took their first lead of the game, 21 to 16. As a group, you know, we, we tend to do how we start. Everything was okay, though, because Blake had the offense ready to retaliate. In just 19 seconds, Blake got off this long bomb to Scott. He ran it in for a 61-yard touchdown, the Bengals took the lead back 22-21. Scott finished the game with 152 yards receiving, leaving him five short of tying his career high. They concentrated so much on pick, so much on pick. They left Darnay wide open, you know, and, uh, and they left the middle open, too. I was able to hit Stephen Williams a couple of times and Tony. This game was far from being over, though, and the Bengals quarterback was getting pretty beat up. 
Two different times, backup Paul Justin had to come in and give Blake a breather. Their defense wasn't letting up. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, the Bengals had another chance to put more points on the board. But once again, they were relying on Pelfrey and the 46-yard field goal was no good. Then the Steelers came in to kick one. Norm Johnson's field goal was good, and they took over the lead 24-22. On this Bengals possession, they began to move the ball again. Blake found Scott for 20 yards. It was the Blake of old, finishing the day with 367 yards. Jeff was outstanding today. He came in and really, you know, showed his leadership, you know, running the ball, passing the ball, just and just talking in the huddle. You know, he had decided a lot. He won the game. Well, I feel like no matter what happened, you know, you're going to have some adversities, but the, the, the true champions are the ones that, you know, can fight through it. Then the ball went to Brandon Bennett. He finished with a season high of 65 yards rushing, 119 receiving, a day he'll never forget. Going into the final moments of the game, the Bengals were back on top again, thanks to Pelfrey, but it was time for the defense to do their job. It was Pittsburgh's ball, first and 10 on their own 39. Tom Zack goes deep to Dunn, and it's intercepted by corner Artrell Hawkins. That was the final play of the game. I wasn't giving it up. They, they couldn't get it out of my hands. So the Cincinnati Bengals come into a hostile environment, Three River Stadium, and they walk out with the win. They beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 25-24. It's the first time since 1990 that they've won the Pittsburgh Series. For Channel 9 Sports, I'm Amy Rourke.